Okay. <clears throat> uh, I thought I would uh, talk about what we have been saying delta function plate, or uh, uh, I think it's best to describe it as infinitely thin. Thin uh, slab or glass slab, let's say. And we mostly want to talk about optics, but the here we will say general, like what are the boundary conditions across for an electric field. Uh, but uh, I think uh, Vipin, I think the best way to see it is uh, if you have a uh, glass. So let's say this is uh, usually a property that describes the optical properties of, uh, of a material is we use epsilon one, but that's the refractive index. Uh, if uh, uh, when we say our glasses have power, uh, that's pretty much uh, the property that uh, describes uh, that. So let's say we have two regions. I thought and that's curvature. No. that again? The curvature is when you, uh, you said your glass, you're talking about power, like. Uh, the power as in, as in our micro. eyeglasses. Yes, yes. Okay, that's based on the. Yeah, that is also described operate. by the power. Uh, yeah, okay. good point. Uh, it is mostly described by the curvature of the glass, correct? But it also has the factor of the refractive index in it, right? Sure. Good point, good point. So maybe that's not a good example, right? I was trying to oh, say... Yeah, so the curvature will be this piece here. So that's the, so I'm saying it's a flat situation. Right? The even okay. without flatness, uh, sorry, even without curvature, you can oh. have bending of lights, right? But uh, I see, get, yeah. get a focal uh, uh, point, probably you need the spherical curvature. Here we are just talking about bending of light. And in fact, I won't even care about bending of light itself. Like your light requires a monochromatic wave. I will just talk about uh, just any electric field. That's what uh, I want to talk about here. Okay. Better? okay. Yes. So, so we have, uh, for our purposes, that is epsilon one, epsilon two optical materials. Maybe that's the way to say it. And. Um, Bipin, could you uh, mute yourself, please? Oh. Thank you. Yes, yes. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. So, so yeah, I was saying there are two uh, optical materials and we would like to talk about how electric field, which is part of light, light is characterized by electric and magnetic field, uh, how uh, that, uh, uh, what are the conditions it has to satisfy on the boundary. We will use what is uh, the equation satisfied by this electro or light or electric and magnetic field is the Maxwell's equations, and we will uh, use uh, uh, that. So, does that uh, motivate that well enough for Bipin? Because this will be a little, uh, I'll use a little bit of mathematics uh, in here. Uh, I'm yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm wondering how much uh, should I, uh, uh, yeah. I'll try a little bit of mathematics, but I, in between I'll make sentences which will uh, make connections. So we are talking about two optical materials. One could be glass, one could be air. How uh, things look like when you, uh, when you see across that uh, interface, if you want. That's what uh, we're talking about. So that's an interface, epsilon one, epsilon Two and the equations uh, we can have is the Maxwell's equation. So we'll have uh, del dotted with D is equal to charge density. That's your electric field. So maybe I should write that. I'll write that in a minute. So del cross E is equal to, let's be in the frequency space uh, uh, yeah, for, for the moment, let me say this, 
d by dt of b. There are two more conditions that d and b are material dependent. Where does this epsilon and uh, mu uh, go in? So I will also say d is equal to epsilon started with d e and d will be mu started with h. So if not for this uh, epsilons and mu's in there, this will be just uh, one that will be vacuum. So anywhere that we need a property, a physical property, we need to uh, get uh, this uh, in here. That's pretty much uh, what it is. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to do this two times. Once I will just have a simple interface. This is what we usually uh, discuss in terms of normal, normally uh, in most of, most of the analysis, we will have an interface and we will do a boundary conditions across and uh, do what are the relations. And uh, then I will talk about what if this was vacuum here, vacuum here, or if, or if it was the same. And if it was, if this was really thin, then uh, what happens? Is there any uh, any uh, non-trivial uh, properties we can we can come up with this boundary condition? So that's uh, pretty much. So these are the two equations. There are corresponding equations for the magnetic field also, but they are pretty much identical. And we will say that there are no charges on the interface. So we will, in fact, go ahead and set this to zero. That way, there is complete symmetry between the electric and magnetic field. So we don't have to do this two times, right? If we just replace D with uh, magnetic field B and E with H, uh, we pretty much get the magnetic properties uh, in intact. Okay? So that's uh, going to be. Uh, what we are uh, we're going to do here. So let me change the camera. So let me start with uh, D. Uh, first, let me uh, very quickly do this in the standard way. What you would do is that you have del dotted with D is equal to zero. And you would say, uh, let's do this on a on a surface, or let's say we have a volume. So this is epsilon one. That's epsilon two. So that's a uh, uh, what's the word for cuboid? Uh, the cube that is a rect rectangle. A rectangular, right? So what do you call it? Well, normal, yeah, you want to do it as a rectangle or a pillbox kind of structure. Yeah, so there's a pillbox. Right? But what's the word for a cube where the lengths are not the same? A cuboid, right? But a cuboid will be a cube, right? No, no. cuboid will be different uh, length edges, oh, right? Oh, cuboid is different lengths. Okay, so this is a cuboid then, okay. So this is a different lengths, but there is a length coming out uh, also, correct? So that's your volume. And uh, let's say this is the surface associated with the Z direction. So there is a Z hat direction in there. And X, Y will be coming out of this. So this plane will be X, Y. In fact, I can choose uh, this to be my I hat direction, right? So X hat. Could be that, and there is a y hat. But I'll change this direction uh, in a minute. I'll keep z hat always in this direction, but x and y, I won't keep it necessarily uh, along, uh, except they not be on the board all the time. <clears throat> all right. So that's uh, what we want to uh, uh, de discuss. I think Venkat is here, I suppose. Yeah. So if we were to do this uh, on this volume, we will integrate this over d cube r. So d is equal to zero, and that's the volume. Right? So that's the volume of this whole uh, region or that whole uh, cube. Using divergence theorem, you will say this. Uh, uh, this comes only on the 
on the surface. So this is the A dotted with B is equal to zero. That's your uh, uh, surface uh, integral. If you have, oh, I meant to write this was pill box, right? If this was a pill box, if this could be a cylindrical or the, we said we are going to have a cuboid. Either way, there are two faces that is in the z hat direction. And there are, if it is a cuboid, there are four faces that are perpendicular to z hat, two in the x hat direction and two in the y hat direction. And let's separate that out. For the z hat direction, it is clear that this will be z hat dotted with uh, d, uh, let's say uh, d on the right and on the left, right? So I'm going to write that as d2 minus d1. I'll start writing this as z dot d evaluated on, uh, on the right and the left. And there is also this region here on the two top surfaces. So this is, uh, how do I say this? Uh, let's say it's Z perp. No, that, that, that won't be a good idea, right? So yeah, shall I define Z perp? Is that a reasonable thing to do? Z perp hat? Right. Z perp hat is direction perpendicular to Z hat. Again, temporarily I'll do that. So that's z perp hat. Like it could be any direction in that dotted with, and there is an area also here. So this is the area of this surface here. And that is this uh, small region there. <clears throat> so dotted with, uh, let's say uh, d, this time it's d, <clears throat> yeah, z perp dotted with, uh, D, D in general, right? I don't need to evaluate this. And that is this integral that goes along, right? So how do I do this? So this is integral dotted with a small tiny element here. So let me call this uh, A, right? So A, A pump maybe. So D A pump is equal to zero. Usually what we say is that this line is delta, right? And this area per will have a, will be equal to delta times some, if it is a cylinder, there is a length associated with that. So it could be two pi r, but there is some length associated with that. And in the limit, when you, since we are talking about the interface, you can talk about the limit delta going to zero, and this will go to zero in that case. Like you can go as close as possible, and an integral is zero if things are well defined inside. Right inside, if it is a smooth function, then that is equal to zero. So you would write this as uh, if you. So you would say this is z hat dotted with d evaluated on the say let's say a plus delta and a minus delta. So let's say this is a, that's your interface and plus z perp dotted with d evaluated. Why are there two dot products? Help me here. Why are there two dot products? I think the a z had z yeah. had yeah I yeah, that, that's important. I put the direction of area with the z perp. So this is a simple area now, right? Yeah. So this is a delta times bz or this is da perp. That's equal to zero, right? That's what it is. And there is this delta in here which goes to zero. But now notice that if by any chance this had a delta function in it, this will contribute. The normal argument is that this integral goes to zero. That's perfectly okay. But if we have a very thin plate, so our point is that d is equal to mu, sorry, epsilon dotted with e. And if epsilon 
had a delta function feature in it by chance. So that's what we mean by infinitely thin plate. If we have this feature in there, delta of z minus a, right? So that means this optical properties survive only on an extremely thin uh, region. In fact, here we are saying that it is an idealized delta function. Whatever it is, the has to have that feature in there. In that case, this will survive, and you would say that z dot of d evaluated at a plus delta, a minus delta would be equal to this time. There will be lambda that survives, so that's z perp this time dotted with lambda dotted with electric field, everything evaluated on the surface. So that's your A. And I should also say there was, uh, oh, I again missed something, right? It's, uh, I'm not being careful. So this is A, right? This is A, A, A here. So there will be this length other than the uh, going in the uh, Z direction, the delta divided by A, right? So that's some geometric feature that comes out which you can, uh, which need not be there. And I'll do this again uh, in a Fourier transform way and make this more rigorous. But that's the primary idea I want to uh, convey that if your material has a delta function in it, this integral can contribute and it's not zero. Most of the times we don't discuss this because we don't come across the scenario where this is an infinitely thin plate. In fact, it is an interface. There is no need for that at all. And if it's an interface, that's equal to zero. And you would say that the perpendicular component or perpendicular means the component along the z hat direction, along the normal to the interface is uh, continuous. The d is continuous. You would say this is epsilon one d parallel is equal to epsilon two d parallel on the second side, right? D par sorry, e parallel. Let the e parallel and the one e parallel and the two, and that's that's it. That's just coming from here. If this was zero, right? That's all there is to it. But in general, that need not be the case. There is a non-trivial piece on the right side. Any questions here? Like that's the basic idea I want to point out. And I'll make this more concrete and this will put in some constraint on this um, also. And I want to illustrate that also here. Yes, Raj. Uh, probably about uh, that L and A basically, because that's an arbitrary choice there, right? Yes, that's an arbitrary choice. So you're saying, why is that there? Yeah. Uh, yeah, why is that there? Uh, yeah, good point. So it seems like your special uh, observation, right? This was just a simple Gaussian uh, Gaussian surface. So why should the Gaussian surface uh, properties come up, right? That's your point. Huh. Yeah, why did that show? Up? I mean, yeah, I guess it, it made sense for me. Oh, this an infinite, uh, infinite plate. I see. Because lambda has this unit, right? Uh, length unit. Yes, that's correct. Dimensionally, you need that. Yeah. Yeah, dimensionally, you need that.
Well, I guess if, if you're taking L to go to infinity, and then the that corresponding piece will, of A will go to infinity. But then if you have A going to infinity in both directions, then you have infinity over infinity squared. Probably. Maybe, I think I, I wouldn't say that. Wouldn't it be better if I absorb this into that? Ah, um, yep. yeah, but, but can't, yeah, because can't that piece become then suppressed? If you can, can't, can't that, that piece become uh, a suppression for the right hand side if you take the pillbox to be span the whole plate? Yeah, but then that depends on the observer, right? Because this is not physical, right? This box is not physical. That's an observer's choice. So the physics should not depend on the observer, right? Like it is an arbitrary thing. It should not show up yeah. in the... Or, yeah, if it shows up, then, yeah, it can show up in the sense uh, when it does an R, right? Yeah, uh, uh, give me a second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it could be that we, yeah, it should go. Yeah, this is the IK perp, right? We would have an IK perp sitting there. Yeah, it's there. Yeah, it is there. And yeah, what were you saying, John? That in in some limit, it will go away, right? Uh, you could choose this to be a bit large, you're saying. And that way, that term will not even be there. Is yeah. that your point? Yeah, I mean, you could choose it to be one in whatever uh, units you want, but then you could also choose it to span the whole plate, which I think is. Yeah, in the extreme scenario where area is very large, then uh, that can. Uh, that yeah, can... you're dealing with an in infinitely. I, I, I forgot. I guess I just. An infinitely thin, infinitely long and wide slab. So if if you cover the whole, yeah. But then L is also large. A is also large, right? Yeah, but it's it's large by this L L squared. Yeah, square. Yeah, agreed, agreed. Well, basically, it is only the dimension which is coming out of the board, yeah. which is L over A is the dimension that is coming out of the board in that Gaussian pillbox. Yeah. Um, when I am thinking, what there, would yeah. it mean to say that like lambda on the plate and you're only thinking the direction which is coming out of the board divided by the direction coming out of the board. What does that uh, particularly may mean? Yeah. Uh, that's there. Uh, let, me, uh, let me do this more rigorously in a sense uh, instead of having this geometric feature in there. If we do this algebraic a little, a little it comes out more precisely. In and fact, epsilon minus four. one is lambda, right? Does it again? Epsilon minus one is lambda delta j minus e, right? Will the change? Oh yeah, when I move it to the right hand side, you're saying this is minus, right? That's your point? Yeah, epsilon yeah, that's minus. That's totally there, yeah, yeah. That's, yeah, totally, yeah. that's, a, that's my error. Oh. But this one is also there, yeah. Uh, yeah. And if that is not there, then we uh, put that in here. Yeah. Yeah, it's just that we never see that as a length uh, scale there. Uh, maybe there is some physics uh, in, in there. We usually do this in the algebraic sense. We Fourier transform and do it. And then we see the k per showing up there. k is the one over length. Well, I think, yeah, there are also both areas. So, yeah. Does that again? I mean, we you have a DA 
dot da dot da on both sides. So you, yeah, I think oh, maybe yeah. something with the delta function because uh, the, the 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 yeah. So the line above that, you have a uh, two integrals with da showing up, and yeah, maybe something with the delta function is is captured. Like, because, uh, let me do this more precisely, okay? Yeah. So, so this is dot is not there. Yeah, let me do this algebraically. It will come out uh, clear, I think. And then I let me keep that there. I'll bring it back. Uh, we'll compare this again in a minute. Okay. So, <clears throat> so okay. So let's do that equation again. Now started with d is equal to uh, zero, correct? And this time, okay, again, we have the same interface. So same interface, epsilon one, epsilon two, and this is z equal to zero, and that direction is z hat. And somewhere here is my x and uh, y. Uh, just to Trust this that this is x y z, so that's x y z dependence is in there. I Fourier transform in x and y just because uh, the interface is chosen to be along z equal to zero, or maybe z equal to a is even better, but uh, nothing, no feature uh, with respect to zero or a. If that is the case, I can replace my gradient operator as a Fourier transform. So this is I k per plus z hat times d by dz. So just because of the uh, translational symmetry in that direction, in the x, y direction, that works out well. And by per, I mean it is perpendicular to z hat. That's the uh, notation I'm using. So this will be equal to I K per dotted with, now I have Fourier transform. So this is all the K per of I'm just not going to write. The understanding is that there is a frequent, there is in principle, there is a time dependence also here, right? So this, I, I think I can also say there is a time dependence also there. I have Fourier transform the time to omega X, Y to, K per and whatever is remaining is just Z dependence. In principle, there is a K per dependence there and there is an omega dependence also. Like technically I should, strictly speaking, this should be K per as a vector and omega, which is, <laughs> and the second piece, which is D by DZ of Z hat got rid of uh, D. Is yeah, maybe once let me write this, and then when I don't write it, it is understood that uh, those dependence are, are always uh, there. <clears throat> okay, that's my uh, simple uh, scenario. Uh, if I were to write this again, just for avoiding the clutter, so there is d plus d by dz of z hat. After the same statement, but I remove that dependence so that there is no clutter. Uh, now I integrate with z, that should be very clear. Uh, this is the k perp we are talking about on the other side of the board. I integrate this now. So I integrate from z equal to a minus delta to a plus delta i k perp with d and here I do the same thing a minus delta to a plus delta is e partial derivative with c c dr the d is equal to zero so that's the two pieces we are saying it's just more it's a one parameter integral instead of a two parameter there it was a divergence theorem was picking up only on the surface on the two sides of the plate. That's this term. This is a total derivative. 
So these two cancel out and this is zero. Yeah, don't do that, please. No. Don't huh? write it like that. Don't like cross the DZ with the, that thing. Don't do that. That's yeah, please right. don't do that. That's not tolerable. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. You can replace it by a total yeah. value. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, <clears throat> so let me take this to the right hand side. And I would say this is Z hat dotted with D, which means that it is a direction along the Z hat direction. So I'll call it parallel. So normal to the surface, evaluate it at A plus delta and A minus delta is equal to, this is an integral. Now I can remove my IK part, let me keep it there. So, or remove it, right? That's your distance we are talking about. I k perp dotted with a minus delta to a plus delta dz. And this is an integral, a, a function or a vector uh, that's evaluated. Uh, let me explicitly say this is dz. But we are integrating on a very tiny element a minus delta to a plus delta. I'm going, so this is like a function from here. That's my a. Right? I'm really doing an integral on that tiny strip there, which will always be zero if d is a well defined function. If d is uh, simple, not going to infinities anywhere, uh, this will always give you zero because that's, that's a strip with zero, uh, zero width. But if there is a delta function inside in here, then this becomes, so this is i k perp dotted with a minus delta, a plus delta, you see, d is epsilon, epsilon we are saying is lambda, right? So there is a delta of z minus a, times lambda is, is the uh, dielectric property. It is dielectric property per unit length. So in that sense, there is that uh, uh, length uh, dependence in there. So uh, this is the one over length and this will have a length dimension in there, dotted with D, uh, E now, right, electric. So this, is, this whole thing is your epsilon epsilon times so you're saying that there is a material which survives or optical properties survive only on a very extremely tiny thin uh, surface and this now survives and we have i k per dotted with lambda right that's okay yeah this is a dyadic now dotted with E. But now E is evaluated at A, exactly on the uh, plate. So we say the more general expression here will be that the discontinuity in the normal component, normal to the surface component of D is equal to the component of E uh, projected along the dielectric function on one side and from the other side it is a caper and this caper is what was showing up on the other side there is this one over length dependence in here right so that's what was showing up as l over a so i k per is i suppose l over a right so i can move that that side now this is Right, that is this lambda, and then there is L over A. I can multiply with that Z hat, and that's what Z perp, right? That's a K perp. So if I were to compare, did I again forget the minus sign here? Yeah, I forget the minus sign. Move that side. Right, so basically, if I compare these two statements, uh, we what we have here is that I K perp is in the other board z perp at times l over uh, a in, in a sense such so.
Yeah. So this should be, and that makes sense, right? That K has this feature that we have. Uh, uh, it's a Fourier uh, transform in that sense. Uh, it is not very clear which length we are talking about. It depends on which mode you talk about, and it depends on that length. So that's where that length, the arbitrariness in that length comes in. So it's okay. I see. Comments? Um, I guess there is a feature of integration involved, which is uh, probably uh, like since you're deriving the boundary condition, I'm not emphasizing on it, but when you do the Gauss's law in uh, integral form, like there is an integration uh, about this volume that is involved, which is changed into the area integration. And that integration is, is still there on the left hand side of the board because now the integration will be over all modes of like all values of k per. You have to still integrate over all values of k per there. You don't have to, like this is okay, right? This is for a k per, that's the value. So one k, yeah. So that is so I guess that's I don't have to integrate, like this is a true statement. Correct. No, you will. Um, if if I Fourier transform again, then I will get the right hand side. You're correct. If I want to match it with the right hand side, yeah. But I'm saying this is a true statement. Each Fourier mode uh, satisfies this boundary condition. Yeah, each Fourier mode. Yeah, each Fourier yeah, mode. So maybe maybe the resolution. K, yeah, each Fourier mode for k and omega satisfies this boundary condition. Correct. Yeah, so I think the resolution on the other side will be also in the same sense. Yeah. Um, that. Um, yeah, agree, agree, agree. Like each each combination of that L over A factor, that equation is. Yeah. So the correct this equation. Is what I'm suggesting is that this is not really equal. Uh, we should be comparing that only after Fourier transform, right? This is yeah, uh, yeah, after Fourier transform and so after I integrate over k per with an exponential in there. So so Fourier transform this expression and I should get I should connect with that. But I don't have to, right? This is what we would say. It's for each Fourier mode. This is for satisfied. That's a better statement, I guess. Correct. And that has this non-trivial feature that there is a piece that depends on this infinitely thin plate. Even yeah. though it's sort of, it should disappear in principle, material which is really thin. But if its optical properties are really huge to compensate for the thickness, then it can survive. It's an infinity. So this is, this is an infinity. This is a small distance, so infinitely thin, infinitely large. They can balance out to give something uh, unambiguous. That's the idea. Mm -hmm. Clear? Okay. So the same idea can be used to, so basically, if I were to write this down. After that, I so should not take too long. Okay. So what we have done is that Z dotted with D, that's a normal component of the surface. So A plus delta, A minus delta is equal to minus I K per. With E and clarify that that's, that's what here. Typically this is zero, but if it is infinitely thin and optical properties are, are extremely 
uh, large in size, then we have that non uh, non trivial piece in this. And this is what we call a delta function plate in the sense that all the optical properties are confined within an extremely thin uh, region. We can do the same thing for, so this is coming from del dot B, right, is equal to zero. If I start from del cross E is equal to I of, uh, let's say, D by DT of B, that's the set other Maxwell's equation, Faraday's uh, equation. And now, since it's a vector equation, this is a scalar equation. Since this is a vector equation, I can project it either along the plane or, or in the perpendicular direction or the normal direction to the plane. Let me project it particularly along IK curve. So I have, first let me write, so this is one equation I have. Del cross E will be I k per using the derivative cross with E plus D by DZ. And I have Z cross with electric field is equal to I omega times magnetic field. Notice electric field doesn't have these material properties coming in. The left hand side doesn't have the material properties. B is mu times H. So that has the material property in there. Correct. So if there is any, any delta function feature coming in, that will be on the right side. Let me take the dot product of this along I K per. So I am going to take a dot product of this whole quantity with respect to dot. So this whole equation in that direction. K per, remember, is perpendicular or, or is on the surface or is on the interface. When I do this, K per dotted with this and then cross and dot can be swapped. So this is zero. Right? The first piece is zero. The second piece is, again, do the cross and uh, dot can be swapped. And I can write that as minus of d by dz of z crossed with i k per dotted with electric field. That's why saying the electric field in the direction of z cross k. k per is already in the direction of the plane or the interface. z is perpendicular to that. The cross product will stay in that plane. So this is one of the component of E in that uh, plane. That's equal to I omega times I k per dotted with B. So it's good to imagine this as we have an interface that is a Z hat in this direction. And k per, there is one direction in there I k perp, it depends on the Fourier mode, and z cross k perp is coming out of the world. If my k perp is on the in the direction of the board, right? that's how it will uh, look like. So this is a component of the electric field coming out of the board. This is a component of the magnetic field uh, in the plane of the board. So that's what it, again do the do the integral like this is this becomes a surface like this survives only on the this is a total derivative if you want this survives on the right side and the left side and this because there is a material property that sur survives only on the board and i think again i messed up uh no there is a negative sign in here right yeah because i changed that yeah so this is okay so now i have z Cross with i k per. This is just a way of saying this is the component of E along in the in the interface. If you want, this is we can say is a per mode of E electric field projected in this direction, which is in the 
uh, uh, on the interface in the uh, on the plane of the interface itself. So this is a plus delta, a minus delta. That's equal to minus i omega i k per one related to the Fourier piece from time, one from the position. And again, I integrate when I integrate with b. This time it is a mu that uh, comes in. So this will be equal to k per dotted with lambda. I have to now differentiate between the electric and magnetic properties. So I call this lambda g dotted with the magnetic field h bar evaluated only at a. That's your it is again. If there were no delta function features there, this is zero, lambda is not there, that's zero. And you would say that the electric field is the, the perpendicular or, or the electric field projected in the plane of the interface is continuous. This is uh, a caper that doesn't nearly, nearly need to be there. You can divide that out and right side is zero in that case, and you would say that's, uh, that's continuous. So you would say D is continuous, the perpendicular component of D is continuous, and uh, the parallel component of E is, is continuous. But there is one more feature in there. That's what I want to point out in the next last, uh, I have about seven uh, minutes. I projected this along the k perp direction. I can also project it along the z hat direction. Right? If I were to project this along the z hat direction, I would get minus uh, z hat uh, crossed with a plus, like right? plus z hat crossed with i k perp. <clears throat> and dotted with the electric field. When I do the Z dotted with here, there is a Z cross Z coming up. So that's equal to zero. And plus, this is equal to I omega times Z dotted with B. And let's Look at that more carefully on this side. So what I have is that Z hat cross I K park after the E of Z of I of K park and omega is equal to i omega z hat dotted with b and z i k k power times omega. Again, integrate with respect to dz. Dotted with dz, electric field. I'm going from a very, on a, along a very thin element a plus delta and the z k per omega that's equal to i omega c at dot to the z c plus delta b now is mu you say that's your uh, delta z minus a times lambda g dotted with uh, h. The h has the z k per uh, omega dependence. Now, uh, so here is one uh, feature. Now, right hand side will give you a i omega uh, z hat dotted with lambda g dotted with h and evaluated at a. But the left hand side, unless there is a delta function, this is not going to contribute. And we say that the electric field cannot have any delta function. 
because it is the material properties that we say can go in the extreme scenario but the electric field we, we require that that does that should not happen electric field should not go really to infinities if we uh, propose that then this will be zero and if that is zero there is a constraint on this electrical properties of this time here it is the magnetic property that is coming in that the magnetic property in the direction of z right so this is the magnetic property in the direction of z has to be equal to zero so this is implying that z dotted with lambda g has to be equal to zero unless you require again the magnetic field itself can go to infinity so whatever we are suggesting uh, that there is this uh, infinitely thin plate with infinite properties or fickle properties they have to satisfy that the polarization perpendicular to the plate so this is dotted with z right so we are saying there is an infinitely thin plate so that's your infinitely thin plate this cannot have polarizations in this direction that's not allowed right? it can have only polarizations in this way it just physically makes sense that it is so thin that you really cannot even the tiniest uh, polarizations you're not allowing in that uh, direction so it is only in this direction and that's that restriction that's uh, showing up so optically thin uh, or infinitely thin optical materials if they exist they will modify the boundary conditions on the electric and magnetic field and with the additional condition that it will, it will not accept polarizations in the directions perpendicular to the magnetic field. So that's the. I, I guess I'm. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Go ahead. This is where, because uh, the the polarizations like you're considering point dipoles. Correct. So in that like, I mean, so you should be able to be able to polarize a point. If it's just yeah, you, I mean, here. again, physically speaking, you would think that that is possible, correct? Because it is a point dipole, yeah. why not? But we are saying that, that even that is not allowed, right? Yeah. The delta function feature, that's not. Well, uh, I think the better way to state it as a, is that that particular quantity, like lambda parallel times the mm -hmm. magnetic field on the boundary, that is equal to zero. Now it admits two solutions. One of the solution is that you don't have a polarization which is in the parallel direction of Z. And other solution is that you have the field which goes to zero. Now field going to zero on the boundary is like more physically constraining in the sense of like you were saying, like uh, normally whenever it is a perfect mirror or perfect something, then only field goes to zero on the boundary. So it is highly possible that your magnetic field is like some positive value on the left inside and some negative value on the same negative value on the left other side and maybe somehow it is coming to zero on the plate itself. But uh, the solution, like there are two possibilities, but this is much more logical solution to choose. There are alternatives, uh, alternative behavior also, like you are saying, like people have considered the polarization the other polarization also yeah well yeah i mean that, that's not physical to construct but in yeah yeah so i mean of course but then in okay that makes sense Thanks. yeah but like i mean uh what probably shajish is trying to emphasize is that like yeah this seems to be a more logical solution which is what we mm -hmm. choose that delta function plate is basically an isotropic plate it cannot have the direct uh, polarization in the other sense and i think there was a... yeah i don't remember exactly i mean i had considered it uh, keeping lambda the other property of lambda non zero uh, a i don't remember the con conclusion like something of like it was saying that if you choose it, it can only be weak in that direction. 
like it's it can only behave like a weak property in that direction it cannot they admit the solutions which are uh, like we say or oh, take the uh, lambda going to infinity uh, property like we say right take epsilon going to uh, infinity and it becomes a perfect mirror that kind of uh, limit was not possible in this direction like if you do it in the direction parallel to z that polarization cannot go to infinity for delta function blades something of that kind of conclusion but uh, now i don't remember it very carefully because if i have to admit that okay lambda parallel is not zero then i have to uh, definitely satisfy this constraint equation which means that i have to check my fields what the fields were doing on the boundary so that is like a little bit open do you remember shajesh that I no, I don't. I don't think I was there. You really. didn't do it, yeah, yeah. I have done that uh, yeah. calculation. I think I have talked to Kim about that stuff. Yeah. I can imagine what it is. It is very small, so it has yeah. to be always probably the condition is only the weak, uh, yeah, weak behavior shows up. Parallel has to be very much smaller than, it. <coughs> or probably. And, yeah, and what were you uh, considering? Yeah, were you taking other things into consideration? Because I guess, like, even if that's really small, that's still not equal to zero. Yeah, I agree. So yeah, but I if would... I if it is not equal to zero, then I have to, uh, like, one has to yeah, exclusively check that your field is going to zero because that constraint equation is correct, right? Like the equation that charges wrote there, zero yeah, equals. I don't have a choice. Like, if you say there is a delta function plate existing, then this is a is a deduction out of it. This you cannot escape. But now, is this zero or is this zero? That's not very obvious. <coughs> and I say no. it is the, or I am for the fact that this is a material property that is a freedom there. Mm -hmm. That's better to choose rather than the other one. But that's just a policy. So I wouldn't say that that's an implication there. So from here to here, this is, yeah, probably not an implication, maybe. Like it's a choice, yeah. Either this solution or that solution, and the solution that we have explored mostly is, like we are saying that our constraint equation is guiding us to consider delta function to be an anisotropic plate. Yeah. yeah. So it's it's like just one thing, but like other solution is, yeah. I don't know if what does that yeah. that physically mean that all the fields come and they go to zero on the plate. Yeah. We can again on the other side. I don't know what they're doing. Yeah. that way there should be an explanation for why like if, if the dipoles are in polarized that, in that sense yeah, yeah why why does the actually much more interesting will be like construct which is what i think bodog did basically right like construct a plate which is only made up of these uh, parallel polarizations not bodog barton did that. barton did uh, i think bodog also did afterwards right like Probably. after 2012 yeah We can never get uh, the opposite condition, right? Uh, from a thick plate, you can get thin plates, but from thin plates, you can get never get thick plates, right? Uh, I'm not sure. Um, like why it is not possible yeah maybe just to add to put john in the conversation like that point is that there is another convincing factor is that if you take a thick plate and then you take the limit yeah of that thickness going to zero we can actually reproduce these conditions yeah that was nice so it is very convincing in that sense that oh this is okay but then now venkat you're asking if you have a thin plate yeah, after you have thrown off some, your thin plate really is an extreme scenario. Yeah, extreme scenario, but I'm saying like that zero that you have thrown out, that zero can be like when you're going in the opposite sense, can be constructed again, right? Like when we went from thick plate to thin plate, the limit was taken in certain sense, right? That zero actually showed up in that limit. 
right? That this quantity will become zero. But if you're making it thick again, that zero can be again written in that form. Yeah, I would say in that sense, yes, yeah. I mean, it is almost like saying if you have one, like limit sine x over x is one, can you come back from one to there? Uh, like in you can construct yes. one out of we like can, some- We can have many solutions for that. I yes, know. yes, yes, of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. Correct. Yeah, I think that's what it is. But yeah, then, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. But yeah, that's it, I suppose. So we should let me stop the recording.